Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jessica. I'm the Ferrari Family Coach and this is part two of a two-part series. The first video we were talking about can humans get sick from dogs or can dogs get sick from humans? And in this video, this is the follow-up, we're talking about how to tell if your dog is sick. So if you're new to my channel, thank you so much for being here. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you. I really appreciate you. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, sign up to receive notifications of all the videos I post. I am a pet parent coach and positive reinforcement dog trainer. So if you're interested in dog training, dog behavior, canine enrichment, canine nutrition, all of that wonderful stuff, please consider hitting that subscribe button and following along and supporting my YouTube channel. I really appreciate each and every one of you. So with that, let's get right into the second part of this video series, which is how to tell if my dog is sick. So the first thing I want to say is that if you suspect your dog is sick, don't immediately rush to social media. The only thing you should be immediately doing is contacting your veterinarian. And veterinarian, even, even if veterinarians are on social media, which a lot of them are, they can't help treat or diagnose an animal on social media. It is against their oath. They are legally not allowed to do it and they couldn't even possibly do it with any accuracy because they don't have the animal right there in front of them. You know, you can say, these are my symptoms, this is how I'm feeling, your pets cannot. So a veterinarian has to be able to physically examine an animal to be able to tell you if that animal is sick and what it could possibly be because the animal can't say, I'm feeling this way. <laughs> They're not able to communicate that to humans in whatever language you may speak. I'm gonna say English because I speak English, but it's, it's, it's a, it's not something that can be treated or diagnosed over social media. So please don't run immediately to social media, run to your veterinarian first. So my number one rule of thumb for figuring out if your dog or cat for that matter is sick is are there any changes in mood or behavior? Any changes whatsoever. And if there are, then we need to discuss that with our veterinarian. And so I can, I'm going to give you a list of the top 10 things that you should be looking for. But absolutely, without a doubt, if you notice or you're experiencing changes in mood or behavior with any of your pets, any type of animal, you need to contact your veterinarian and let them know. Say, hey, my my cat normally is pretty active or in, you know, likes to play with the XYZ toy and eats all their food and everything in the past couple of days has been changing. They're more lethargic and maybe they don't wanna play with that toy that they normally love to play with and they're not eating all of their food. Sometimes they smell it and walk away. Sometimes they'll eat a little bit and walk away. This is something that you need to be discussing with your veterinarian because there really could be symptoms. These could be symptoms of illness that you're noticing in your pet without actually noticing the illness itself. First thing I want to mention is blood. If you're seeing blood, you need to contact your veterinarian. Like just as a blanket statement, I understand there could be some minor exceptions here and there, but if you're seeing blood, contact your veterinarian. Uh, another one is bad breath or drooling. This could definitely be signs of something much more sinister going on inside of your pet's body. So if you're noticing bad breath or drooling, contact your veterinarian. Excessive drinking or urination is also something you need to contact your veterinarian about. Any type of appetite change, especially if it's associated with any kind of weight loss or weight gain, you definitely want to have a discussion with your veterinarian about what is going on with your pet. A change in activity level, like I mentioned earlier, maybe your dog or cat is beca has become much more lethargic in the last day or two. When we notice symptoms like these in our animals, they can't tell us how they're feeling. So we have to be pay paying very close attention to any symptoms that may be arising in our pets. And all of these that I'm giving you in this video are symptoms that you definitely need to seek immediate veterinary care for. Stiffness is another thing that you really want to pay close attention to. 
Although it can be common in aging pets, we still want to pay attention to it. We don't want to ignore it because it can be very painful and there are things we can do. So if your pet is suddenly having difficulty getting up from a nap or walking up or down stairs, we definitely want to talk to our veterinarian about that. Sleeping more than normal or other sleep changes also can be a sign of an underlying illness coughing, sneezing, panting, labored breathing, anytime you're, you feel like or you're noticing that your pet is having any changes in their breathing or any difficulty breathing whatsoever, this is, can certainly be an emergency. Do contact your vet right away. Dry or itchy skin, if you notice any lumps or bumps, um, anything like that, if your dog is itching excessively or chewing excessively, if you're noticing like lumps and bumps that aren't normally there, we definitely want to bring this up to our veterinarian. If you're noticing frequent stomach upset or a change in their uh, bowel movements, we of course, want to discuss this with our veterinarian. And I know it's not sexy to talk about bowel movements with our pets, but it is one of the best ways to be able to gauge your pet's health. So do stay on top of that. And dry, red, or cloudy eyes, of course, are, are symptoms of other underlying illnesses in the body. So any of these things that I mentioned, we absolutely want to be aware that these are symptoms of other underlying issues. We don't want to just put band-aids on symptoms. We want to treat the underlying issues that are causing these symptoms to arise. We don't... I know I've said it before, we don't want to put a band-aid on a broken leg. And that's what you're doing if you're only treating symptoms. We want to take these symptoms to our veterinarian and say, what could be causing this so we can treat what is causing these symptoms in my pet that are obviously affecting their uh, quality of life, which is not something we want to have happen. We want our pets to have a really good quality of life. And so don't just treat the symptom. And when we're talking to our veterinarian, we need to let them know that. Well, while in some cases we do need to treat the symptom to be able to treat the underlying illness, we need to be able to discuss intelligently with our veterinarian that we understand that these symptoms are just symptoms of a deeper underlying condition and that we do want to take care of that underlying condition in our pet to make sure that they are living their happiest, healthiest life. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. I do hope it helped you. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have anybody that you know that could use this information, whether it's now or to archive for later, please share this with them and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel to help my channel grow. I would really appreciate it. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching this video. I do hope the information in this video has been very helpful to you. That is my goal. That's why I'm here. That's why I put out this content for you you. And don't forget that this is a two-part series. This is the second part of a two-part series. So I will link the first part of the video series below. And that is how to, uh, can my dog get sick from me, a human? Can humans get dogs sick and can dogs get humans sick? That kind of thing. Uh, because of all this weirdness going on right now, I wanted to clarify with the current virus that is affecting the world that it is a human only virus. So please, please do so please do go check out that video for clarification on that and for some other really interesting information about zoonotic and non-zoonotic diseases. And if you want to know what that word means, click in the description, check the link to that video. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. Thank you so much for being here. I really do appreciate you. If you haven't subscribed, now is the time to do so. Hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.